We scientists, we physicists, like to play with very tiny things. These tiny things we call particles. And when we make them travel very, very fast and hit each other, things come out from the collision. Oh my God, this is impossible. I need to think. huge, massive effort towards the next big particle accelerator that hopefully will be built at CERN. And this will require the collaboration of an enormous amount of countries and researchers from all over the world. Physics that it's never been done before. Facciamo i selfie. So I work with uh, special materials that are called um, superconductors. These materials have a very special property, which is easily summarized into uh, the loss of the complete loss of electrical resistance at very low temperatures. And these materials are important at the moment, at least in my field, for the development of some parts that are needed for building particle accelerators. A historical figure that I would like to meet in person Maybe Marie Curie? I mean, which scientist would not want to meet her? It depends on the friends. The friends that are also scientists know very well what my life is, but the ones that are not, they are so much fun. Because they imagine my life being way more exotic than it is. Sometimes I even manage to fool them with. I invited a friend of mine, who was my best friend by the way, to, to the lab where I was working and that was the first time she was accessing it. I managed to convince her that we would have scanned her eye in order to access the lab. And she was super nervous waiting for that. And I made fun of her, I still make fun of her for this thing because she was convinced this would, would happen. So this is my tropical corner where most of my plants are and look at the color of these leaves. And that's it. Okay, okay, this is not all but oh my god look at this. Isn't this Oxali the cutest thing? I just love them, especially when I come back home and I see a new leaf is coming out like that's the best present ever. <laughs> I just rush to the plant, check everything and if there's a new leaf, I need to touch it and congratulate it. Sometimes maybe a little kiss. <laughs> I don't want to know the psychology behind it. And of course, the only person I know that knows very well about this stuff is her. So here, Bathroom, taking care of my plant, how to look at it. So, um, you might wonder why a banana? Uh, a banana is an, a radioactive object. So a banana contains potassium in amounts, <laughs> not let me think. In 100 grams of banana, there are something like 350 milligrams of potassium. And potassium is an element that naturally occurs into uh, three isotopes, potassium 39, potassium 40, and potassium uh, 41. Potassium 40 is the least abundant in nature, but it is also radioactive which means that over time it decays, it transforms into something else by emitting other particles and energy. This is 
nothing dangerous, this is nothing uh, exotic, this is our everyday life. We actually eat <laughs> radioactivity, <laughs> we are <laughs> eating it. It is nothing scary, it is something natural. We shouldn't be scared of what we don't know, we only need to understand it better. This is one of my favorite times here at CERN, times of the day, I mean where basically most of the people start going home. There are not many people left and it's so quiet. This is my workstation when I telework. Bye, Gigi. Facciamo selfie. I spent the last four days, which were meant to be holidays, by the way, I home working because I wanted to catch up with some work that I wasn't able to do in the last two months. I got stuck on day one of these, of these last four days on a stupid problem and I could not find any way to fix it. I read my code hundreds of times in the last days. I was plotting the wrong data. There was a typo in the data label. The mismatch was so small that I could not think I was making a huge mistake like that one. My work has an impact on society, not immediate impact on society, because for basic research, it usually takes years, sometimes decades, to get to the point that it finds its application on everyday life. But it will eventually find it. And like many other technologies that uh, come from discoveries that have been done in basic research, in fundamental research, it will change our lives in some way that we don't know yet, but this is basically the, the meaning of fundamental research. We do it to discover, we do it because we are curious, we do it because we want to understand how nature works, but then we also always find an application to that that makes our lives much easier. So guys, I hope you liked my videos. Please let me know below in the comments if you have any questions. If you have time and uh, you enjoyed this, please also go have a look at the videos of my Easy Train friends. And um, that's it. Please leave a like and subscribe if you liked and want to see more.